Welcome back everyone, it is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another StarCraft 2 1 vs 1 replay cast. We're going to be having ourselves a European Terran vs Zerg Port Alexander spawning down the bottom right hand side of the map. Playing for Team Iron Chain, it's Soul. I, there's a bit of hesitation there and that's just because I was thinking of what team he's on. That, that clan tag that he has on at the moment a little bit misleading since this replay is a little bit older but spawning up the top left hand side of the map it's lambo and when i say a little bit older i just mean like a few weeks old it's still on the same patch and everything so perfectly relevant we don't need that up at the moment though but no so we've got ourselves a terran versus zerg not sure if i introduced his opponent top left it's a lambo he's playing for team clash he is a very good German Zerg, really rising out. I mean, as far as countries in StarCraft 2 goes, there's a lot of really good players from there, of course. There's Showtime, who's really been very good, but then there's also guys like TLO, who's just so well-known, and then, then Hero Marine, who's a very good Terran, probably one of the better Terrans in Europe. Well, there's no doubt about that, but Sol himself is a very, very good Terran in Europe. He's still sort of like an up-and-comer in the scene. He hasn't really had a big breakout run, and it could happen any day days, day now, guys. I'm always willing to bet on Soul if I'm watching a tournament or anything. It's just... He's eventually he's eventually going to have his really good result. I believe. Anyway, talking about that, because there's not that much else going on in this game. Standard build's coming out on both sides, and that could mean that we'll have quite a TVZ on our hands. Of course, TVZ, it's a little bit... It's interesting these days, and I say that because there's battle cruiser rushes that are a serious thing in the meta. It's just Terrans are really hyper aggressive these days. Like uh, standard bio fall, the the sort of bio play these days doesn't seem to be like a game plan. It seems to be more of a follow up. That's just my opinion, of course, but that's part of the reason why I think we see a lot of other really sort of more out there strategies because Terrans really want to try and get damage done early on in the game. Whereas Zergs, players like Lambo just incredibly good, just making sure that they won't take any damage to the best of their ability. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see how these guys are going to play. Reaper pops on in for Soul, going to shoot a Ling in the face. And then uh, the Queen pops out this, so the Reaper likely going to get sent home. Of course, the Reaper, part of its job is to scout, make sure that that third base goes down, that there's not, like, a ton of roaches and ravagers running across the map. Reaper for soul. Got to be careful, though. And uh, we are seeing Lambo go for Pneumatized Carapace. As far as straight-up Zergs go, Lambo is definitely one of them. He likes to have a lot of the information and find out what's going on in that regard. But So uh, that Reaper for soul now coming in, checking it out. But that makes me sort of curious what Lambo is going to do, what style he'll play. And then uh, Sol, on the other hand, I mean, it does look like he's going to be planning on trying to get something done. He's got a starport on the way. Of course, it's StarCraft 2, so you're always trying to get something done. It's a matter of how you do it. And there we go. There's the fusion core. So Sol going for the good old battle cruiser rush. Lambo, on the other hand, just getting up that pneumatized carapace. And sometimes Zergs will do it. It's weird how this comes in and out of the meta. Like, it's never been completely commonplace. There's always been a fair few Zerg players who don't go for this, but Lambo, one of these players who does like to go for this, is Overwood's going to fly right on in, and he's going to scout that fusion core, and in today's day and age of StarCraft 2, that generally means battle cruisers. Lambo, while this is going on, just droning up. He has the information now, and a good player like him will be aware of the timings and everything, whereas Soul, on the other hand, just uh, lurking around with his Hellions for now. There's only so much you can get done unless you really commit into the Zerg player. For now, though, Lambo, he only has six Lings. So, like, if Sol maybe tried to dive in with his Hellions, he could maybe get something done. But as we see, Lambo with his Queens covering one position. And uh, that battle cruiser is on the way for Sol. So we'll see what he's able to get done. Meanwhile, Lambo still just continuously droning up. Roach Warren on the way here for Lambo, so we're going to have that for defense, but of course he will have to deal with the battle cruiser. Queen's a very common part of doing that. You build up enough queens and you can shoo, shoo away the battle cruiser. Soul 
keeping his Hellions hanging around. He's actually got a fair few of them now just moving across the map to join up with the rest of the army. And that timing goes right in hand with that wall finishing up because he doesn't want to be vulnerable to those Ling run buys. And now that wall's up, he doesn't have to worry too much. So these Hellions can begin poking and prodding. Reaper dives on in, checks the worker count from this new bit, but not going to see much else. Looks like uh, a Hellion did go down. That's a bit unfortunate for Soul. Losing that, not able to find too much so far. That battle cruiser actually teleports to the back of the Zerg's base. The soul just teleports it right in, doesn't want to give Lambo any heads up, so it's actually just going to fly on in. Drones are being pulled, of course. The battle cruiser can tank a lot of damage, but if soul just keeps right clicking on drones, it's possible he may just kill a few. This is something that I like to see being explored here. That battle cruiser just going straight for drone kills. So far, it's killed six. Now it's getting shooed away. As long as soul keeps it alive, though. That's pretty decent from the seam of things. Now the Hellions are wanting to dive on in. Lambo, of course, very aware of the sort of typical Terran one to attack. But behind the soul, he's going to be playing Mac. We've got a uh, Magfield Accelerator on the way. Double Cyclone production. He's got three factories. So it is just going to be a Mac follow-up to this, which is definitely interesting. Soul actually did not go for Yamato Cannon this game. And he's just made the one battle cruiser so far. Terrans make a number between, well, usually, you know, one. If you're making battle cruisers, you gotta have at least the one. And then generally three. We don't ever see a mass them because they're still not that great in the late game. However, follow ups like, uh, psych, follow ups like mass cyclones and whatnot have been showing a fair bit of promise for Terrans wanting to explore a new style. And we'll see how Soul is gonna be able to make this work versus Lambo. Lambo's still only on four bases. I imagine we'll be seeing him start a fourth base relatively soon. But uh, Sol is securing up his third base. He's got his 1-1 one, one on the way. Lambo has a Spire on the way. However, for Sol, one of the things that makes Cyclones really handy is they actually shut down Mutas pretty hard with that Magfield Accelerator. Now the Hellions and Cyclones come on in. They're going to pick off that drone building that hatchery, cancel that, kill an Overlord. So Sol, he's now got this map control with these Cyclones actually finding yet another Overlord. I mean, it's little pickoffs like these that are nice if you can continuously keep getting them. However, for Lambo, we're now seeing six Corruptors on the way. I guess he's not aware of whether his opponent is still building battle cruisers or whatnot. Soul literally just con committed to the one. And now eight Corruptors have been forced out as a result. So Lambo may be over, com over committing to the defense a little bit. But of course, you really have to respect the battle cruisers, so you can't blame them. Looks like uh, Lings and Roaches wanting to push back these Cyclones, but of course they'll just lock on and retreat. Now, this battle cruiser floated across the map. It's still got tactical jump on cooldown, but it should be able to escape. But, I mean, Soul invested in one battle cruiser. He teleports it out, and Lambo, I mean, he's got a decent amount of corruptors. Looks like he may have actually canceled a few. Five corruptors is what he has. Yeah, none died. So, actually, Lambo looks like he did cancel at least a few, but. Soul now with this mass Hellion Cyclone just going to be picking off units here. Lambo trying to save some of them by transforming them into Ravagers, but these Cyclones are really punishing the players who overcommit, and it looks like Lambo's Queens may have overcommitted a little bit. These Cyclones locking onto these Queens. Queens are not sprinters, guys. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're very helpful for Zerg, but they are not the most mobile of creatures now. Hellions and Cyclones got to be careful not to overcommit. Lambo actually wanted to get that surround off, and I mean, the Cyclones still are rather weak, so actually a fair few die to the Corrosive Bile, so that's a nice pickoff for Lambo. And if we look at the supply, Soul's been getting the odd bit of damage done here and there, but Lambo's still up on supply very heavily. Soul's now been transitioning into tanks, though, so get some good shots off. Gonna send back that Roach Ravager, however. Now Corruptor's coming on in. Probably gonna be able to pick off that battle cruiser. Meanwhile, Soul has no choice but to keep these Cyclones and Hellions running. However, they actually stop for a second and... If they get caught, they get picked off pretty quickly. Soul, can he hang on though? He's got one Cyclone to help shoo away these Corruptors, the Battle Cruiser being mass repaired. Cyclones are actually very good versus Corruptors though. Wow, look at that. Now, uh, Soul staying alive. He's got a fourth base on the way. Whereas he actually managed to cancel Lambos. So that's a very significant thing because like Soul, his fourth command center is done, so he's actually got a better economy than Lambo. He's down on supply by a heavy amount, so he's got to be very careful of the aggression that can come from the Zerg player still, because we've got nine death muffins on the way, as uh, Swarm Host are going to begin assaulting Soul most likely, and dealing with Swarm Host is definitely doable as Terran. You can sort of either go for your own aggression, or you can sort of try and tank the tank the brunt of the army, but. 
if you don't have enough of a force, Swarm Hosts are very, very hard hitting to a Terran player. So Lambo, while this is going on, I mean, he's been teching up only just at a lair still, but of course you can make Swarm Host with just a lair and an infestation pit. The infestation pit, he can also make infestors later on. But uh, no, so this is how Lambo's gonna try and deal with this. His economy isn't that great, but if we look at the overall supply, he's literally more than double that of Soul. Or no, never mind. Exactly double of soul right now, 66 to 132. Wait, uh oh, did I embarrass myself? Is my math wrong? No, I think that's right. Anyway, it's different now. Soul's actually made an extra battle cruiser or two committing into these air units. However, his planetary comes right under fire. Pardon me, I felt like I didn't pay enough attention to that. I didn't actually expect Lambo to commit on there, but he kills off the land center there. That Planetary just died so quick. Lambo with enough DPS able to pick it off. I guess Soul didn't have enough tanks actually in position to deal with that. Now Soul's invested in two more battle cruisers. He's making a third. And this is somewhat concerning to me because Lambo, he's got getting out seven corruptors. And I mean Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but battle cruisers generally get slapped down pretty hard by corruptors. However, with cyclones to cover them, maybe that's not gonna be the case. Soul's actually looking to push on in, maybe thinking that Lambo doesn't have enough to deal with this. And I mean, Lambo does just have this Roach Ravager, eats a lot of shots. Soul's got to be careful with his BCs, though. I mean, Lambo did invest into these Corruptors, though, instead of anti-tank. So these tanks are still going to be able to roll on up. However, he does still have the Swarm Host, and they are plenty anti-tank. A lot of these siege tanks get surrounded. I mean, Soul, he does manage to keep his army locked into this position, but Lambo's still going to be looking to break it. Right now, Lambo producing more Roaches more corruptors were his soul he's sort of just making a few tanks a battle cruiser slowly gaining that battle cruiser count i mean as long as you micro them right you won't lose them but gotta be careful still hellions run on and in but it doesn't look like they're gonna be able to get too much can this one hellion get much of significance doesn't look like it as he goes on down now i mean soul he was looking like he was in a pretty good position before he lost that fourth base but i mean maybe he didn't repair in time which is one of my big gripes with a lot of pro gamers. So like, repairing a base so it doesn't die is pretty important. And we do see, more often than I'd like, some Terrans. I mean, of course they're doing a million things in a moment, but I mean, if it comes down to microing a drop and whatever and keeping a planetary alive, I'm pretty sure the planetary is more important. Now, we do see Lambo committing on in here. Swarm host wave has been dealt with. The battle cruiser standing for now, there's not enough corruptors to send them back with the cyclones walking on those corruptors actually gonna go down. So Soul does keep that air control with his couple of battle cruisers. The cyclones complementing them very nicely. This is really interesting to see as long as those BCs are repaired. And the thing about the BCs is versus high numbers of corruptors, the battle cruisers will fall flat. But if it's just smaller numbers, they can always Yamato them left and right. They can slowly keep that number down. And that is punishing for the Zerg player. So we'll see if Lambo can really hit that count that shuts down the battle cruisers for good, or whether he'll keep sort of being nickeled and dimed by these BCs of Soul. So we've got to be careful though not to eat too many Crozabiles. Gonna to want to keep repairing those BCs if possible. He's also securing himself his own fifth base as Lambo is up to six bases while this is going on. The Swarm Host looking for a bit of a surround Soul, one of his tanks fires, but the Locusts are coming on in anyway, and we'll see. Is Soul gonna be able to stand strong? There's a fair few corruptors now. Not all of these battle cruisers were repaired. One of them is teleported out. Is there any more Yamato cannon? There is, so Soul can maybe pick off some more of these corruptors, but for now he's running for his life. Another battle cruiser forced to teleport away. The Cyclones want to try and deal with this. They send some of the roaches packing and Soul survives, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, Soul's really teching up here, getting up more starports. He's he's trying to make the mech play happen, and we'll see if he can. Bankwise, Lambo is maxed out, and that bank is going to start building up, which Zerg generally wants to be able to deal with mech. He's also got the high efficiency swarm host. He's got out a good corruptor count. Still got a lot of roaches and ravagers, which aren't the most supply efficient, but you generally need something to supplement your army in that regard. Now, uh, Lambo still just sort of setting up on the front of Soul's door, and here comes in a wave of swarm hosts, and these swarm hosts... Five swarm hosts have died this game, but a lot of others have stayed alive, and that's where they get that efficiency from. Lots of Yamato cannons going down. Corruptors are gonna start falling. Some of those battle cruisers get hit hard with the corrosive files. They're good positioning from Lambo. Uh, one of the BCs actually dies. Not sure if it had uh, teleport out or not, but uh, or if it had tactical jump ready. Meanwhile, Lambo just realizing he's got to deal with this mech, so he's investing in pathogen glands. 
Does he have Neural Parasite? He does not, but Neural Parasite, very good at taking out battle cruisers. More Corruptors on the way, Soldo making Vikings, more Cyclones on the way, maybe realizing that he can't necessarily commit into the BCs and just beat out straight Corruptors because they can't. The Corruptors will win out. Soul's got to be ready to deal with the rest of the army, though, but while this game has been going on, Soul, I'm pretty sure he's at the highest supply he's been able to get Terran when maxing out. Generally, it's not surprising to see a mecking Terran be down, say, 50 supply for a time, but eventually you do want to catch up in that. Infestor wanders forward, gets picked off. Locust wave walking forward. Soul's just retreating. They're trying to stay alive. Corruptors are coming forward. Corosabal goes down on one of the BCs, but for now, they're still trading pretty well. Meanwhile, some of these Hellions come on into this base. However, there's not a lot for them to kill. It's really just been these continued fights on the front line right now. Cyclones locking forward. Those red lines connecting with the Roaches. The battle crews are still standing strong. Got to be careful not to eat Corosabal's. I mean, it packs a punch, that's for sure. But still, these BCs are pretty safe here because the Cyclones are actually so good. I don't think there's a Terran unit that's better at killing Corruptors than a Cyclone, as they just put out so, so much damage when they have that upgrade. Soul now even making Liberators. It's interesting to see all the different styles of Terran mech, and right now we're seeing one of them from Soul. And so far it's working versus Lambo. Eventually he probably wants to get maxed out and really start to hurt the Zerg, but Soul's got to be careful. Swarmhost continuously harassing him. Cyclone's being careful not to go down. BCs are pretty decent at cleaning out Locust as well. Soul is wanting to secure another base. The longer the game goes on, the more bases you, you need. I mean, that's sort of StarCraft 101 there, but... Lambo, while this is going on, he's building up a very significant bank now, so I'm curious what he's going to try and make to deal with Soul. The thing about Zerg is that if you are a Zerg player, you generally want to see exactly what your opponent has so you can make the correct response to it, because Zerg is very reactive of a race. Now these Locusts, once again, coming in, it's free for Lambo to send these out, of course, so he's continuously just harassing Soul, but it's not like Soul is taking any big losses or anything. Lambo is now making six Broodlords to try and uh, eventually force or maybe get a killing move on Soul. But Soul is not bad as far as anti air goes. The Cyclones, a decent number of Vikings. And then the Battle Cruisers with their Yamato cannons. I mean, four Yamato cannons that most of the Broodlords dead. And oh, these Cyclones or these, these Swarm Hosts, pardon me, walk forward for Lambo. And he's actually losing a lot of them. That's a pretty big miscontrol. Actually losing pretty much all of his swarm host, whether that's intentional or not to free up the supply, but I don't think that would have been. Although, as I say that, he starts up 16 corruptors, so maybe that is the case. Now, Lambo, he's got four infestors. Infestors are very, very critical. At uh, as Zerg generally wants one of those late game spellcasters, I wouldn't hate seeing a Viper or two coming out of Lambo because they are very good at, of course, whittling down the Terran army or helping out those big fights. We're seeing some fungal growth go down on the Cyclones, they're locking them up. Some of the Vikings even hit. Lots of liberation zones set up though. Lambo has to engage on into this. Can Soul's air army stand tall versus this? He needs to take out the blue boards. He gets some Yamato cannon down, but it looks like it was on the corruptors. Lambo's spilling forward. He's really committed to this air army and he is shutting down Soul hard. Who's not teleporting out his battle cruisers. He's currently down to two. And uh, right now, there we go. The BCs teleport out not very far ahead though. The turrets will send those corruptors back, but that's the beauty of the Broodlords right now for Lambo. He managed to keep them alive. Soul didn't clean them out. And suddenly, these Broodlords are what's really able to punish this Heron. And as long as Zerg can protect the Broodlords, they're in a very, very good spot generally. Soul's got to be able to deal with this, but I mean, even the Crows of Bile that Lambo's been using has continuously been so good getting damage off. Just the Corruptor count, it's at 26. I don't think Soul has a Viking count to be able to deal with this. Yamato Cannon's going down, but there we go. Those BCs just melt under a high number of Corruptors. I mean, the Cyclones can keep walking on, but Cyclones themselves are not enough to deal with Broodlords. I mean, if Soul can maybe squeeze out a mass number of Vikings to try and deal with this, but, I mean, Corruptors are pretty good at picking off the Vikings, so... And just this, the number for Lambo has, I mean... If Soul maybe had the same number of Vikings, but that is definitely not the case. Now the Broodlords are coming forward. The Cyclones, if they can maybe lock onto the Broodlords, they can maybe buy Soul some more time, but being backed into a corner is not what you want, and maybe he needed to take the fight a second before. He gets some lock-offs, though, onto the Broodlords. However, with all the Ravagers underneath, once these... 
once these cyclones are done for, and look at that, the corruptors even caustic sprayed down that planetary. GG, Lambo manages to take it. I guess uh, Soul may have to go back to the drawing board for this one, as uh, Lambo just really having lock on how to deal with that sort of Terran style, playing very, very well. Of course, Soul. it was interesting to see him try and play this new style, and maybe we'll see Terran eventually find, or Terrans eventually discover, like, a very more a more reliable sort of mech strategy because i mean we do see a lot of them work but they generally I'm, I'm going a bit more into like the overall meta and analysis we see terran play this sort of mech style but late game terran mech hasn't really been too much of a thing since around like heart of the swarm ending late game terran mech was very good terran was happy to sit back get to a great composition versus zerg but since uh legacy of the void Zerg generally has had a better time dealing with mech. Terran can't usually just sit back as long, as long as they want, which is a very good thing for Zergs. So when Terran wants to mech, they generally have to play very scrappy, a style in which the Zerg is not used to dealing with. That's why we see all these mech styles come and go. But uh, so to date, really, since uh, part of this swarm, we haven't seen a lot of turtly Terran mech styles that have worked at a very high level like these two guys are. Anyway, hope that didn't come off like, you know, balance whiny i do play terran admittedly guys but that's more of just like a general review of where the matchup's at anyway i really do hope you guys enjoyed this cast if you stuck around through that sort of tirade make sure to hit a like because clearly you're willing to stick it through and if you enjoyed this cast and you're new to the channel make sure to hit subscribe I'm trying to break that 1500 subscriber mark so that means i need like 10 of you to subscribe otherwise i shall see you guys watching <laughs> Pardon me. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.